Hey, welcome, or welcome back, to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is I'm having a bad hair day, so I've got a hat on. And what I also know is that it is time to do an update on my hits and shits list. I've got an awful lot of new viewers for a family since I last uh, did one of these. So some of you may be wondering why you don't see certain brands on my channel. Now I have a hit list which are companies that have proven to have excellent customer service, excellent products, absolutely top notch company, no hesitation in recommending them whatsoever. Now you'll normally find that these are companies that I have got uh, discount codes with because I will only offer you discount codes on companies that I consider top notch. But the ones that I'm gonna oh sorry. I think the hay fever's starting again. Either that it's this is like a nervous twitch that I've got where I rub the end of my nose. I'm going to be getting my nose pierced soon. Hopefully that will hurt when I do that then. And it might break me of this habit because I end up with no foundation on the end of my nose. <sighs> so I'm going to go through my absolute best of the best today on my hit list. And I have my shit list which are companies that you will not see me use on my channel. Um, I may have some of their products which I will use off camera or if I'm doing two or three films. I mean, for example, today, the foundation that I've got on today is actually Um, the Wet n Wild stick foundation because I know it doesn't last long on me but in terms of I only need it to last long enough for a couple of films and I'm probably going to take this off and if I've got the spoons do another look later then I don't want to be using my good quality long lasting foundations for that when I'm only going to be taking it off myself anyway um, so if I do have foundations by those companies, you may find that I use them for that. But I'm not going to tell you that I'm using their foundation. Um, if I'm asked who it is, I will normally tell you, but then I will tell you why I haven't specified. Wet and Wild are not on the hit or the shit list by the way, just wanted to clarify that, it's just an example that I'm using. Um, people on the shit list are there because of multiple transgressions with no obvious or visible attempts to rectify the situation. Then I have my limbo list, which is companies or brands who were on my shit list but have since made changes or issued apologies or changed behaviours in such a way that I'm still not necessarily going to buy anything new of theirs, but if I do have something of theirs, you may find it being used on my screen, on my, my channel, um, 
and once I restart my Hell Yeah Well No series I will discuss forthcoming releases of theirs. People on my shit list will not be discussed at all. So I'm pretty sure you want to know who's on these lists so I am going to shuffle the camera that way slightly and as it always does it will swing back there we go but that has now left me enough room here to put up some graphics so I'm going to start with a positive I have got my given enough gin I can rule the world notebook which is full of notes funny that who'd have thought a notebook would be full of notes so I am going to start with the hits top of the hit list is September Rose they've been up on my wall from very early days um, they were one of the first they were the first company to give me a discount code but I still waited until I had tried their products and made sure I was happy with them and um, I actually had some issues when I was first trying to buy the slush palette that the discount code didn't work so I contacted them saying I don't know what's going on I'm having real problems with this have I typed it in wrong do I need to be on a, a, you know I'm on Chrome at the moment do I need to go across to um, Safari or God forbid Explorer um, and she came back and she apologised and she's like no I'm really sorry I'm having major issues at this end and she issued me a one time code that instead of giving me 10% off gave me 20% off my first purchase so I'm like oh hang on she's an indie brand she's admitted there's an issue but she's just given me a double discount to apologise for the fact it's taken me a while to actually get on and order this and this was a Sunday evening this wasn't during working hours. I was not expecting to get a reply until the Monday. Um, and then the product arrived. And you all know how much I love my slush palette. Um, it, it's, you know, it's by far one of my absolute favourites. So, of course, September runs are on the hit list. Following on from that, we have Blush Tribe, who are also on the hit list. Um, I have recently got a code with them. I didn't have a code for an awfully long time. But I absolutely love their products. I've got I've got 90% of their palettes, I'd say. And a fair few of their loose pigments as well. Um, and I've got a brush set as well, which she sent me for free. Because I messaged her. I'd had um, a palette arrive and one of the shades was broken. It, was only, it wasn't massively broken, it was just like the top layer had kind of come off at the... Because they're circular, but it was like the top right hand corner, if you can say corner of a circle. The top layer of that had just chipped and lifted off, but the rest of it was absolutely fine. So I just messaged her and let Salma know that... You know, I don't know if this is just a case of my postman was playing football with it or if you've got a dodgy pressing on this particular batch but just wanted to let you know sort of thing. She came back and she's like, oh my goodness, I'm awfully sorry. Um, I can either work out how much percentage wise that one shadow is from what you paid and refund you or I can send you a prepaid label, you can send it back and I'll replace it. I'm like, no, sweetie, really, it's 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 fine. It's really not that bad. I was just giving you a heads up in case you suddenly had a flood of people coming back, um, just so that you were aware of it. And she was so thankful to me that I wasn't whinging, I wasn't complaining. I was just, look, here's a heads up in case you've, you've got an issue here. That she sent me a palette and the brushes and I'm welling up. Good sake. 
And I was so touched by that. I really was touched. So, Blush Tribe, quality of products, customer service, are on the hit list. I am genuinely tearing up at that. Honestly. Right. Pull myself together and continue. Oh my glitter, OMG. Now I have known Robin years. We were on uh, in, uh, in the same sort of makeup group on Facebook for a long time. And way back in the early days, she actually made a lipstick and named it after me. Bomalicious. Um, I've had a lot of her lipsticks over the years. I've had lip glosses, um, I've had a lot of pigments and palettes and mystery boxes. <laughs> And she ended up giving me a code as well because I was buying so much, which was lovely of her. Um, I love her quality of of work that she produces. I mean, oh, I really should have thought to get this out before I started filming. But she put up a picture on Facebook of a magnetic palette that she designed a steampunk anatomically correct heart so a steampunk where you've got all the like the watch bits so just nice and empty I commented on there that oh my god that's amazing I need something like that um, let me know if you start making them because this was just a, an example it was her using up some odds and sods that she'd got left over and when I uh, when my lexicon palette arrived that I'd ordered that was in there so I messaged her saying sweetie you've included this I need to pay you for it and she went no you don't it's just a thank you and I was just, again, totally overwhelmed by it. And she is such a sweetheart. She is one of the loveliest people I know. Um, which is why I'm quite happy to promote her products. Because they're damn good quality. And I also know she's got damn good customer service. And then, of course, Gerard Cosmetics. Now I'd been using Slay All Days, they were my holy grail setting spray, they have been for a long long time. Um, I'd had this particular Gerard highlighter in Audrey for ages, you can see how scuffed up it is at the back look, so you can see how long I've had it. So I've been a Gerard customer for a long, long time. And then Jen Gerard decided she was going to open up the um, discount code, affiliate code system to everyone, regardless of their channel size. So I got a code with Gerard, which is amazing. All my codes are listed down below. They all state whether I earn from them. Um, but I was absolutely amazed by that. Absolutely stunned. She was the first of the bigger companies to actually offer smaller channels, discount codes. And unlike some people, casting no names and stuff, but uh, <laughs> let's just say it, it rhymes with. Um, Christina. She didn't add a lot of people just to remove them a year later. <clears throat> I 
and she regularly will put I mean ugh, admittedly I've not made that many sales through my code because I don't push my codes like a lot of people do I probably should do to be fair try and earn myself a bit of extra money but I'm, I'm not the sort of person that does that I've got codes there if you want to use them great if you don't want to use them well that's fine what's more important for me is that I'm honest with you which I always am um, I think so far I've earned something I think I've earned about seven or eight quid in total from sales that I've made from people using my Gerard code but there's been at least two occasions when she's put 80 bucks into my account for me to buy new products and try them out without it costing me anything despite the fact I'm one of the smaller much much smaller channels so do you know what Gerard Cosmetics yeah you're on my hit list and the other one which I don't have a code with is Beautylish now every time there is a launch on Jeffrey from Jeffrey's beauty based site is a nightmare and even though it means that I end up waiting longer because it has to arrive from America nine times out of ten you will find that I order from Beautylish they package things so well you regularly get have I got any here that I can show you when you get deliveries through from Beautylish you will very often get free samples in there I had a, a sample of the it wasn't the Clinique take the day off balm but it was something similar you, you know you'll regularly get in with your orders little samples of things which is absolutely awesome they are packaged so well I've, I've only had I've ordered a lot of things from Beautylish I've only ever had two issues one was the Jeffrey You Better Work purple lipstick which oh god my favourite shade he's ever produced but oh the worst formula ever I really wish he'd sort the formula out for that colour because it was an amazing colour but it literally sucked every ounce of moisture out of your lips it crumbled it hurt to take back off again awful and I messaged Beautylish and I said I've had a lot of Jeffree lipsticks none of them have been like this um, is this an issue with this particular shade or have I just got a dodgy one they instantly refunded me no questions asked because the item was was out of stock because obviously by the time it had arrived with me it was probably I think about 10 days after the launch date um, so it, it was out of stock by then everyone been buying it because it was out of stock they instantly refunded me no questions asked didn't even want to see photos of it um, and likewise I had an order um, delivered where one item was missing and again I messaged them they instantly apologised sent me the replacement out and sent me another little freebie in with the replacement as well for the item that was missing so if you are ordering from Jeffrey, I probably really I might put this film out after he launches <laughs> Bloodlust, otherwise everyone's going to be on Beautylish and then it's going to scupper me trying to get hold of it. But if you're going to order anything for Jeffrey, I would absolutely recommend Beautylish, especially if you're a UK purchaser, because as soon as you spend 35 bucks, which is the equivalent of two of his lipsticks, you get free shipping. Free shipping. Um, and then, sorry, I thought that was the front door, but I don't think it was because they've not locked again. Um, you get free shipping, 
over 35 bucks and they work out the tax so you pay the tax up front so when it arrives you don't then get a delay waiting for the import tax bill and you don't pay a handling fee that's the issue the last item I had come in from America um, it's actually right. I'm really sorry about that next door I've got construction workers in but I have got to film because I just got to film basically the last thing I had from America were these two from Peachy Queen and I'd ordered them in their sale got them for a really good price really chuffed um, postage wasn't too bad it was, I think it was about bucks postage ish but then it arrived and I got charged six pounds import tax and eight pounds handling fee so the money I'd saved in the sale buying those pallets I lost out on on arrival and it delayed it getting to me by 10 days because it sat in customs for 10 days before it got passed out to Royal Mail. And then it only got passed out to Royal Mail because I chased it. So if you're ordering anything like that from Jeffrey or if you're ordering something um, that you can't get from here, I would absolutely recommend Beautylish because you don't get any of that crap when it arrives. I mean with Jeffrey, it was 20 quid postage from him. I think it's gone down to a tenner now, international postage. But that's still an extra 10 bucks that you're not paying with Beautylish. And you don't pay the tax up front with Jeffrey, so then you get the tax on arrival and then you get the handling fee on arrival. Most I've had for a handling fee was 25 quid on a frock that I bought from Australia. So, yeah. So, there is my completed hit list. Those are companies I absolutely recommend. Right. Limbo. KVD Vegan Beauty. Now, when it was Kat Von D, it was absolutely on my shit list and it was not coming off my shit list there's been a lot of scandals surrounding her through the years the two biggest ones were the anti-semitic Nazi affiliations that she had allegedly and the anti-vax When she left Miami Inc, there was a burning hell Jew signed Kat Von D that she gave to Ari. Now she claims she just left a stack of signed photos and somebody else wrote that message on there. But TLC got a handwriting expert in who said that it was 99% sure that Kat Von D had actually written that message. So anti-Semitism straight away. Mm, no, thank you. I've got a lot of Jewish friends. I don't stand for that shit. There were rumours of her having Nazi connotations. And then she started dating Jesse James. Who is known for his... Shall we say extreme views? Her current husband has the swastika on his neck. He claims that it is the Indian version of the swastika, where it is used as a symbol of peace and protection. But given the connotations surrounding swastika even if you were using it as a symbol of peace 
and protection. You wouldn't have it on your neck on display like some thug. To be honest, it reminds me of American history that Ed Morton was in with the old swast the big old swastika. And then she came out with her anti-vax statement about her kid. I've got a lot of friends who are immunocompromised for a lot of different reasons. They physically cannot be vaccinated because the vaccine would kill them. They rely on herd immunity. They rely on everybody else around them having had the vaccination so that they don't pass these illnesses onto them. So by choosing not to vaccinate her child, everybody that child comes into contact with is in danger. Because, say I came in contact with a child. Now I've been vaccinated, so I most likely would not come down with the illness. However, I could still carry that illness. And if I then met up with one of my friends for coffee who is immunocompromised, they could catch that and it could kill them. Or at the very least it would make them seriously very, very ill. So unless her child has a medical reason that he cannot be vaccinated, choosing not to vaccinate your child, no, 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 no. However, she has now sold all of her stake in the company back to Kendo. But they're maintaining the KVD and they're saying it doesn't stand for Kat Von D, it stands for kindness and vegan beauty and discovery and doing good things. So it's kindness, vegan beauty, discovering new things, vegan beauty. Because you've called it KVD vegan beauty. Really? Why don't you just call it KVB, Kendo vegan beauty? Um, so the fact that it still uses her initials makes me wonder whether she will be getting a sneaky little backhander for the use of her name. Even though they've said, ah, no, she has nothing to do with it now. And it's not named after her. So I'm, that's why she's in limbo at the moment and she hasn't come completely off of the list because I need to make sure before I go and buy anything else that she's not getting any hit back from it. But it does mean that you probably will see me start to use um, her products on screen again. Uh, for example, I've got her foundation here. Uh, and I've got three of her palettes. So you may find that one of those pops up on screen. But until I can be absolutely sure that she's not receiving any monetary gain from that brand anymore, they will remain in limbo. I need to have a wiggle, I'm in a lot of pain. Hold on. Okay. Tart. Now I put Tarte on the shit list because when they released their Shape Tape foundation it was 15 shades there were 
12. What? 1 tan, 1 caramel, and 1 deep tan. And they said, Oh, well, it's the winter. People are lighter during the winter. Name a tang who has the most beautiful coloured skin ever. She wouldn't be able to find a foundation in that range. My friend Annette Kay would not be able to find a foundation that matched. That is not acceptable in this day and age. Not for a company as big as Tarte. No. When you've got, you know, Fenty launch, what was it, 50 shades? So Eva, 60 shades. Pure four in one love your selfie. 100 bloody shades. Okay, it makes it quite difficult to find the actual skin colour that you want. But 100 shades, it means you've got more of a chance if you are at the very, very light end or the very, very deep end or the olive undertone anywhere on the spectrum of actually being able to find your shade. So I put them straight onto the shit list for that. And there they stayed until they produced the, uh, the Found Sealer Multitasking Foundation. This one. Which they actually released in a reasonable foundation range. Um, and they certainly seem to have been more open to criticism um, when they released the, um, the different shape tapes, the different concealers and stuff they've been producing. Still not great, but better than just 12 shades of white and 3 of tan. Um, so they are making efforts. They are. They have. They have accepted their criticism. They've seen where they've gone wrong, and they are making efforts to rectify it. So they are on my limbo list at the moment. So, as you can see, I did purchase one of the foundations. I will do a foundation review on this if people want it. Um, and I've got. I've got. I've actually got quite a few there. Um, products. I've got blushes. I mean, I'm trying to pan this blush, this exposed blush, which I've had for three years now. I've just started to hit pan on it. Look. Um, so I've got quite a few of their blushes. I actually gave quite a few of their blushes away because I thought. Geez, seeing how long it's taken me to get through this one, I'm never going to get through seven little mini ones. I've also got quite a few of their palettes as well, which um, when I do my next palette collection and declutter, I will most likely declutter some of them because my tastes have changed quite a bit since I bought them. They're rather neutral for my tastes now. But you will now start to see them appearing on my channel again and they will be discussed on forthcoming Hell Yeah Won't Us. Continuing on with the limbo list we have Manny MUA or Luna Beauty. Now again he was on the shit list for a number of reasons not just the whole Dramageddon thing that blew up where he was seen to be very manipulative and very controlling of the people around him. Um, I can remember seeing snapchats of his where he was on a brand deal 
and he was walking down the corridor in his hotel and he could hear a couple in one of the rooms having some adult time together and he recorded the sounds from the corridor and was giggling about it like a school kid. Really? Given that a lot of your fans are quite young, do you consider that appropriate? Do you consider that appropriate on a brand deal? That you're going to be taking the mick out of people that are... Okay, they were, they were being loud, but they were in their hotel room. They considered they were in private. They didn't need it to broadcast to however many millions of viewers you've got. Um, and then he was... There was another one where he was in an Uber, annoyed that the driver was Spa Hispanic or Spanish and wasn't speaking English. Really? Just... He comes out with... with... Cod Spanish on his channel how many times? And yet moans that his Uber driver was speaking Spanish and he couldn't understand them. Learn the damn language then, if it's your history. If it's your culture. Then there was all the crap about um, him social climbing. He was friends with Jacqueline Hill and then dropped her. Then he was friends with Patrick Starr and then dropped her. And then he was friends with Jeffrey and dropped him. Who are you going to move on to next? And that, that annoyed the hell out of me. And then, after the Dramageddon thing, he tried using um, his family, most notably his father, to gain sympathy. He tried to do this, this his own documentary series, because he'd seen how well the Shane Jeffrey first documentary went. He was trying to do his own one about how his dad had never accepted him, but now he does. And he did the ubiquitous apology where he wore a grey hoodie, sat on the floor and cried. <clears throat> so there were a number of reasons that he went onto the shit list. However, since starting Luna Beauty, he has been reasonably drama free. He seems to have been keeping his nose clean. Um, from what I've seen, the products that he's been releasing have been met uh, very positively from people in the beauty community, people whose views I trust. Um, so he's currently on my limbo list. I'm contemplating. I do like the look of the... Uh, is it Moonspell palette he did where it's named after all the different TV witches? I do like the look of that one. If that comes up in the sale at any point on Beauty Bay, and it comes down from being 50 quid closer to maybe 25, then I might consider picking it up. Um, I like the look of his highlighters, but I'm not sure if I'm just attracted to the packaging of them. Anyway, he's in the limbo list. Laura Lee, Laura Lee Los Angeles. The whole drama getting thing, the racist tweets, the the first apology, again grey hoodie on the floor, whimpering and crying, and to be quite honest, making no sense at all. Followed by. A second apology. Oh, I'm so disgusted by my first apology. I really shouldn't have done that. I'm doing a lot of charity work, you know. <sighs> and lots of undisclosed sponsorships on YouTube as well. So, again, she is very much in limbo at the moment. I'm... 
I'm watching her to see what happens. Um, I've not heard massive amounts about her makeup since the whole drama getting thing. Um, I know Seeking Alexandria Page likes her single shadows. Um, but I don't really hear people talking about her makeup that much. So again, she is, she is also in limbo. So, there is my limbo list. And now, the bitch you've all been waiting for. It's the shit list. I'm going to get me a drink for this one. Right. Where do I start? Huda. Huda Katan. Huda Beauty. Lack of inclusivity for a start. Okay, I know she's based in Dubai and to show men wearing makeup it's um, illegal over there. However, she sells worldwide. So if that's going to be an issue and she doesn't want to show that on her Instagram then have somebody in the US manage her Instagram so that she can't be held up for it. There are also very few people of colour on her Instagram for a long time when you scroll back. Uh, she has started to include more now since the, um, the backlash, but it's... Hmm. All of her stuff is highly perfumed, which is a skin irritant. I've got her foundation, and honestly, it smells like perfume. So it's going to be no good for people with sensitive skin. And also, you, know, you put your perfume on and it clashes with your makeup. That, that's no, thank you. Claim to be cruelty free, but sell mink eyelashes. Sorry, you cannot tell me you have a pet mink and you brush it every day. Don't believe this for one minute. Her first palette, the rose gold textured palette. She announced that was being withdrawn from sale. It was never going to be available again. So everyone that hadn't got it but had been interested rushed out and bought it. Six months later, she re-released it with an improved formula. So all those people that had bought it six months prior were like, well, hang on a minute, you said it was going away never to be coming back. If you'd said it was coming back, I'd have waited and bought the new one. So I don't like that. And then the final straw for me. Shh, stomach, you've been fed. The final straw for me was when she stole a smaller indie brand's marketing technique. Everything from Huda up to this point had been the desert, the colours of the desert, the colour of the sunset across the sands. Everything was based on where she lived, what she'd grown up with. Then she released her setting powder and all of a sudden she was a 1950s housewife baking a cake. Beauty bakery anybody? Every single item that beauty bakery sell kitchen themed. Cake mix foundation anybody? 
every single advert they have put out has been like 1950s housewife. Their setting powder is called flour, for example. Their highlighters are icing sugar. I need to wiggle. Since day one, Beauty Bakery has been bakery, 50s style, cutesy. Huda from the start had been desert. Suddenly she decides for this particular, oh, because it's baking powder. Well, why didn't you call it Sands of the Desert then? Sorry. I really hope you can't hear next door's construction. So that really, really annoyed me. Because Huda technically is an indie company. She's not owned by a huge brand like Kendo or Estee Lauder or something like that. If you can hear that burbling, I swear it's not my stomach. It's next door's pipes. They're having their boiler done today. So it really annoyed me that Huda would effectively steal the whole style of marketing that Beauty Bakery had based all of their company around to use for her baking powder. Because if you, you know, you've, you've, you've done everything around the desert, so call it Sands of the Desert for goodness sake. You didn't have to call it baking powder. Yes, I know people bake with it, but that's really not the point. So, all of those things combined, she's on the shit list. Um, I don't have any of her palettes. I've got dupes of her palettes from other companies. And I do have her foundation, but as I said, I will just be using that when I'm doing a look to take it back off again. So, yeah. Too Faced. What an appropriate name for a company. Every holiday they release the same crappy products that are lower quality than their usual palettes and they're just rearrange the positioning of the shadows, put it in different packaging and sell it for an overinflated price every Christmas. But the biggest reason for me, for Too Faced, well there are two. There was Jared's boyfriend's cake, Rich Lives Matter, do you remember that? Because I do. Belittling the whole Black Lives Matter campaign. But the biggest thing for me is the way they've treated Nikki Tutorials. I, you will have seen from my first ever makeup declutter that I'd done. I actually decluttered the palette that I had that was the Nikki Tutorials Too Faced palette because it wasn't as pigmented as I like my palettes to be. They absolutely screwed Nikki over. She thought she was getting this amazing deal being offered 50k when they made millions in terms of profit. They delayed paying her, and until they paid her, she was still under contract with them, and she couldn't then collab with other people, so she missed out on other collabs. They sent her a sample palette, which she approved the quality of, and when she swatched it on her launch video, it looked amazing. And then the palettes that other people were getting, 
They were even worse than the stat than, than the holiday palettes that Too Faced released. And it turned out they'd done some of the palettes at their usual factory, and that was the standard that Nikki had signed off. But the bulk of them went to a different factory. It was a much lower quality. And when people were complaining about the standard of the palettes, Too Faced let Nikki take all the backlash. Didn't come out until years afterwards that they'd used a different factory to produce the bulk of the palettes. And then when Nikki recently came out as being a trans woman, Jared Blandino's sister opened her trap again. That woman is vile. She's vicious. She's She's a snake. And she came out with, oh, that's not the only thing she's been lying about. What? <sighs> she has now apparently been sacked from Too Faced. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm sorry, until Joe Blandino apologises for the Rich Lives Matter cake, Apologises to Nikki for screwing her over with the quality of the palettes and pays her a decent sum of money considering how much they made on that palette and apologises to Nikki face to face for screwing her over. As far as I'm concerned, Too Faced are cancelled. Now unfortunately, um, I've got a couple of Too Faced palettes. I've got the Gingerbread Spice and I've got the Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar. Uh, annoyingly I like both of those. So I will continue to use those but you won't see them on screen. I've also got um, the Born This Way Super Coverage Concealer. Again, I will use that off screen. And I have two foundations of theirs. I've got the Born This Way and I've got the Peach Perfect. I will use those up and I will not be buying replacements which is absolutely gutting because the Peach Perfect is my perfect foundation but I'm standing my ground on this I don't want to give Too Faced any of my money given how they've performed and behaved Linked to Too Faced, we have Yucky Winer. My affectionate little nickname for Jackie Ina. Where do I start with her? Well, let's start with the Rich Lives Matter cake. She at the time was working with Too Faced to expand their foundation range. Had it been anybody else, any other company that had had that cake, she would have torn them a new one. She delights in tearing other companies down, tearing other people down. Even my husband when he hears someone mention Jackie Ina goes racist because that's all you ever used to hear her say till someone she was working with had a Rich Lives Matter cake then we didn't hear a peep 
And when people were asking her her opinion on this cake, she turned around and said, don't expect me to be the angry black woman I'm dealing with this privately. Really? Because you've been quite happy to be the angry black woman before. You've been quite happy to do a, like a 45 minute Snapchat rant about IT Cosmetics. About Jeffree Star. So, uh, but, but you can't have a go at Jared because you're working with him, yeah? That's how it goes, is it? Right. Two-faced. Mm. Mm, appropriate. If you challenge her over any of her views, instead of responding to you in an adult manner, she blocks you. You don't agree with me? Block. You're calling me out on something I did? Block. I don't like the look of your face? Block. She goes on and on and on about racism. And admittedly, there is a lot of racism out there. Which should be called up on. But then it's okay for her to put a status up saying how um, when some white person bumped into her, she glared at them really angrily. As if to say, go on then, apologise to me, go on then, apologise to me. But white people won't open their mouth and say sorry first. If you accidentally bump into someone and then they start glaring at you like they want to rip your head off, I don't care what colour they are and what colour you are, you are going to be like, oh, should I say anything or should I not? But you don't want to fall into the angry black woman stereotype. Right, okay. But the biggest thing for me that really tipped it was the whole Petty Page thing. She accused Petty Page of trying to steal money from her. She never mentioned Petty Page by name, but she made it damn obvious who she was talking about. Even going so far as to showing one of Petty Page's thumbnails in case you were not quite sure. And the title of the film, so that you'd be able to find it. Just in case you hadn't worked out who she was talking about. She could have cost Paige her job. Which in turn would have cost Paige her home. It was since proven that Paige wasn't behind it. So, did Jackie do the right thing and go onto YouTube and apologise for accusing Paige? No, don't be silly. She put out some half assed statement on Twitter where she's got a fraction of the viewers that she's got on YouTube. Waited hell of a long time before telling all of her stands not to be nasty to Paige. Too late, they'd already sent Paige death threats. Yeah, death threats. Because she lied about her. And anybody who dared challenge Aunt Jackie on any platform got blocked. Brave woman, aren't you? So until she comes out on her YouTube channel, the platform that she accused Paige on, and apologises to Paige, and quite clearly states that Paige was not the person who tried stealing money from her, and she's really sorry that she 
insinuated that Paige was the person that had done this and that all of her fans that were horrible to Paige should go and apologise until she does that on YouTube no, she's staying on the shit list and by virtue of that any product that she's involved with will also be on the shit list so even if Too Faced weren't on the shit list the Born This Way Foundation would be because she was involved in extending the shade range she worked with Artist Couture on two different um, highlighters yeah, as far as I'm concerned, those highlighters don't exist. Her palette with ABH. I like the look of it. But there's no way in hell I'm buying a palette with her name on it. Not till she clears the situation up the page. Beauty Blender company that has more colours of sponge than foundation. Though they did produce a nice orange one, especially for Donald Trump. And then they came out with the, ah oh, yeah but you see, we're Hispanic and we have real problems finding olive undertones so we wanted to try and cover that range for people. Right. So you, you only sell beauty blenders to uh, Hispanic people then, yeah? People with olive undertones. People pale as a pint of milk or super deep with the melanin. They, they, none of them have ever bought one of your beauty blenders, no? None of them would ever want to try your foundation, no? And this was around about the same time that Tarte had come out with their ridiculous foundation range. So you would have thought Beauty Blender, seeing the shit that Tarte got for it, you would think they'd go, do you know what guys, do you think we ought to just hold off on this and just, just get a few more at either end of the spectrum, just, just before we launch? Wouldn't that have been sensible? Yeah, they didn't do that. But they'll produce a beauty blender that changes colour when it's wet. Because, what, you're too damn lazy to pick it up and see if it's wet or not? Before you start doing your makeup? Plus 20 quid for a sponge, behave. Shop Miss I do them for a quid, and they're nicer. So yeah, Beauty Blender, shit list. Jacqueline Schill. Again, where to start? Undisclosed sponsorships. Only appearing on YouTube when you want to sell something. Clearly having had fillers in your face but denying it and saying it's because you've put on weight. Love, this face has been all kinds of fat to thin. You've got fillers. I know how fat lays down in a face. And then of course there's the hairy lipsticks, which I understand some people are still awaiting a refund for. Still. Mm hmm. Alrighty then. Mind you, let's face it, has she ever had a launch go well? There was the Becca one, where it was made at a different factory, and it was bloody awful. 
there was the makeup beak one where she then got a contract with Morphe and suddenly realised that Makeup Geek was going to be charging more for their palette because theirs are made in America and Morphe's are made in China. So she kept Makeup Geek dangling, let them buy the shades in and then walked away from the deal but used their suggestions for the layout of the cover for the Morphe palette that she did the, foot, the, white, the white one with the silver signature and her pictures on the back hmm. then of course when that was uh, that was then re-released wasn't it, it went to Ulta it's supposed to be um, limited edition but like everything of hers it's limited edition it's limited edition until the rush dies down and then it becomes a permanent part of the stock and it went to Ulta and suddenly had wipe clean covers so better than the first ones that had been released and there was the whole vault debacle although I actually managed to get a decent set oh my hair that looks good today it's not Jacqueline Hill Yeah, I actually managed to get a decent set of the vault. I was one of the few, mind. Then there's the... I haven't just come back to YouTube to sell you something, but hey, I've got a new palette out with Morphe. Seriously, girl? Seriously? And then... The photo shoot turns out to have been done last April and they found import logs showing the Jaclyn Hill 2 JH2 palette coming into the UK November 18 That's like 15 months ago now, girlie. Are you saying that these palettes are 15 months old? Oh no, she came out with something saying that that was the, um, that was the redone first white palette that went to Ulta. Right. But the palettes you did with Morphe, you had your black one, which was the favourites. Then you had your first Jaclyn Hill, which was the white one. Uh, then you had the full, and now this is Jaclyn Hill 2. So why would the first white one be called Jaclyn Hill 2? If the new white one is Jaclyn Hill 2. I don't know you, but I'm confused. So she's on the shit list. And uh, the last one. Oh my shit list. Here's Marlena Still, Makeup Geek. And I'm surprised, to be honest, that I've put her on here. But just recently, as I'm pretty sure most of you will know, there was a channel, there is a channel called The Fancy Face. And Marlena issued a copyright strike against her, threatening her channel. Because she used the words Makeup Geek in the title of a film where she was talking about Marlena Still, who is the founder and owner of Makeup Geek. When you think Makeup Geek, you think Marlena. When you think Marlena, you think Makeup Geek. But she said, this was an issue between me and her. She shouldn't have used Makeup Geek in the title. Well, that's a trademark, not a copyright, love. So you're, you're telling me that someone who's been on YouTube for 12 years doesn't know how the copyright system works. <laughs> Can you smell that bullshit? 
Because I can. All the way from the UK. I can smell that bullshit, Marlena. Not to mention, I was watching... Amy Loves Makeup. And she was doing a film where she was reviewing. She'd bought some Makeup Geek shadows. And she'd bought one of the little nine pan This is actually, actually a tart one, but she bought a nine pan magnetic palette. And most nine pan palettes fit nine shadows in perfectly. But the nine pan palette that she ordered from Makeup Geek, when you put nine pans in it, like that. No, 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 that's not a raised ridge around the edge like on my tart palette. That's a gap. But it's not a big enough gap to put another shadow in. Unless you've got one of those long skinny shadows like from uh, Urban Decay Naked palettes. That's sensible then, isn't it? And there were two specific shades that she'd had of Makeup Geek from years and years and years ago. Because she still has the round pans of them. And she decided she was going to rebuy both of these shades because she realised that these, these shades that she'd got were probably the best part of five or six years old now, these Makeup Geek ones. So she thought, well, okay, these are the new improved formula in the square ones, I will buy those two shades in the new formula. And then she swatched them alongside the old ones thinking they're going to be so much better. I mean the black was the blackest of blacks and the, 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 the lighter white multi-chrome or multi-tone shade was one that she'd always used for in a corner highlight, a touch of shimmy shimmy. And then she swatched them next to each other. Old versus new. Improved formula, huh? Better pigmentation, huh? Right. So your reformulated shadows are not as good as a shadow that is six years old. And you're issuing copyright strikes against smaller channels. Claiming you didn't know it was going to try and take her, to her channel down. Then there were all kinds of, oh, I don't know what's going on, I'll get my team to look at it. Implying that she hadn't done it. Before coming out admitting that she'd done it, but she didn't realise that this was going to happen. And all of this stems from her film last year, where she let slip about influencers wanting 60k to talk about your product clearly she was talking about Jaclyn Hill and in that film she showed screenshots of emails and Tina from Fancy Face it showed her full email address with her full legal name. She'd asked Mylena numerous times to please blow that out because Mylena had effectively doxxed her and Mylena kept ignoring it. So Tina did a film about it 
And that's the film that Marlena copyright struck. I am too old, too ugly to have any damn time for bitches that are all backstabby like that. So Marlena, welcome to the shit list. So that is my shit list. So, you've now seen my hit list, my limbo list, and my shit list. So, do you have companies that you just won't touch? I'm expecting lots of Jeffrey Hill, Jeffrey Star comments now. Jeffrey Hill, Jeffrey Star. So apart from Jeffrey, because I know exactly what people are going to say. Apart from Jeffrey, and apart from the ones that I've already mentioned, are there any companies that you will not buy from? For either ethical or moral reasons. Let me know in the comments box because I'd be really interested to find out. Right, if you're one of my regular viewers please double check you're still subscribed YouTube. Do keep deleting you off still. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the blethering. The uh, look for this eye look should already be up. I'll try and remember to link it. If not, give me a nudge and I'll either put it in a pinned comment or I'll um, update the description box with the link. Um, it'd be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family by hitting the subscribe button. But if you wanted to watch a few films first to see whether you like my makeup application style, girl, there's a lot to choose from. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up and indulge. And boys, you can join in too. Right, my darlings, as ever. All that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.